So this is describing the phenomenon of how when you have uh, some object that's sitting on an incline, as you increase the incline, if it's tall enough, it'll kind of fall over, right? You've seen that. That's not surprising. And using the tools of static equilibrium, how do we explain that? One, how it didn't fall over when the incline wasn't very stiff. And what changes? That it falls over as the incline increases. So um, it's probably, it makes sense to describe how it looks like when you have uh, just an actual flat surface. So if you have a box that's sitting on flat surface, then this is the kind of forces that you might consider. So for a box sitting on flat surface, then, um, then well, so the, the, the way I'm used to drawing free body diagram is representing this box as a single dot. Then we have force weight, mg, and the normal force, n. Now, uh, this particular representation becomes too simple as we start to consider rotation. So what I am now going to start doing, um, or have started doing, is I actually start using the representation of the object itself to start drawing forces on that to indicate where the force is acting. So for gravity here, I want to draw, um, put that arrow where the point at which the gravity is acting or and it's thought to be acting. So that would be the center of mass of the box. So this uh, um, arrow for gravity should be really drawn here. And this is where it kind of gets a little bit complex with um, all the figures. Um, the normal force, uh, let me do that in red because the way I'm going to draw it, it'll now overlap and I want to make sure that it doesn't get confused with the, um, it stands out from gravity. Um, so the normal force, it's a, what it really is, is there's actually uh, pressure from the surface is touching all over the bottom surface. But that's kind of an unworkable <laughs> arrangement. So what we do is we model the normal force as acting on a single place along the bottom surface of this uh, box. And where we consider that normal force to be acting, it's uh, basically just going to be wherever it makes sense. So I'm going to, here, uh, the, uh, this is what I mean by makes sense. Let's, here where it's intuitive to place the normal force is just right in the middle. That's kind of where people would place it if they um, just had to guess out of blue where is the normal force acting. And this is how it makes sense. Imagine calculating the torque due to the normal force and the gravity. Let's, uh, um, let's use this corner as the point of rotation. Then torque due to gravity is this lever arm times the gravity. And torque due to normal force is this lever arm times the normal force. Gravity is going clockwise. Normal force is going counterclockwise. They balance each other out you get zero net torque, so it's at static equilibrium. Everything <laughs> works fine. Now, so this is the old situation with a flat ground. Now, let's uh, consider this picture here. I think this uh, picture is uh, drawn um, for the setup where, um, for the setup where it doesn't quite tilt yet. Let me just make sure, yeah. I think so. So um, drawing the same free body diagram here, gravity is modeled as acting on the center of mass. So this is gravity mg. Now, if you 
were to model normal force the same way we modeled it here, as in at, acting at the center of the um, uh, surface, then you don't actually, it, it, it becomes uh, impossible to have zero net torque because the torque due to gravity is this lever arm, shorter lever arm now because the, the line of action is closer to that uh, pivot point times gravitational force going clockwise still. And the lever arm for the normal force, that's too great. Um, so this will, um, the way this analysis goes, it'll say, oh, you should tilt over, um, oops, I'm, you should tilt over counterclockwise. And um, at least uh, in the setup it's drawn, it's not quite, it shouldn't tilt over yet. So what we say in analysis of this setup here is you say the normal force, we can model it as if it's all acting at this point, uh, which is, oops. Uh, we say we can model it as uh, acting at this point, sorry. Uh, which is here. Uh, okay. All right, let me just redraw the whole thing. <laughs> so <clears throat> I have gravity uh, acting downward. And actually, so the point at which normal force should be acting is the point, uh, well, I guess it's not exactly the point, uh, never mind. But okay, so this is how you would locate the normal force. You would locate the normal force in such a way so that this lever arm for normal force is exactly the same as the lever arm for gravity. Um, I think it, it, the, how it's represented in the figure, it's a little bit complicated, but basically as you, uh, as you make the incline steeper, steeper, which will make the lever arm for gravity less and less, you also make the lever arm for normal force less so that, um, so that when everything's accounted for, you get that net force is equal to zero after having included the friction force, which um, about this point, the friction force generates no torque, but it contributes to the net force. And you can also enforce that net torque is equal to zero. So, so that's the new thing you have to worry about um, with this static equilibrium setup. There are some things that are not changing. So uh, when you weren't worrying about rotation, and I think this goes to some of the multiple choice answers, um, you had to uh, account for the, you had to be able to calculate the magnitude of static friction. And that portion hasn't changed. When you calculate the magnitude of uh, static friction, that's going to be exactly the equal amount that counters the magnitude of the X component of gravity, or that's gonna be mg sine theta. So as you increase the angle, the friction force, it doesn't decrease, it increases. And as an increased line angle, the normal force uh, from the incline um, does decrease. Um, same way you had before when you had, didn't have to worry about static equilibrium. And and um, and uh, I guess if you're answering this as multiple choice, what you have to be able to recognize is that um, one that so this is set up in a way so that you are meant to uh, worry between the choices of C and D. And what I hope you will realize is that um, even though this uh, box will eventually tilt over counterclockwise, it's not because of any additional forces providing greater counterclockwise torque. 
if anything, um, up until up to a particular point, we are actually decreasing the counterclockwise torque due to normal force so that these um, torques remain in balance. Now, and as with the increasing incline angle, the clockwise torque due to gravity decreases with the decreasing lever arm. And you also decrease the torque due to normal force accordingly so that net torque remains at zero. What happens is at the tipping point, so at the point where it's about to tip, what you have is that, so that would be at like angle that's a slightly greater, like something like this. Um, the center of mass is directly above. So w the weight of the object is providing zero torque. And here, you would uh, model the normal force as acting on this at this point of con at the um, at this pivot point, the corner point of contact, so that normal force also provides zero torque. And this is what happens at the angle greater than this. At the angle greater than this is what happens is gravity is now on the other side of that pivot point. So with this lever arm, gravity is providing counterclockwise torque. And the farthest to the left that, I mean, you know, if you could, you would put normal force here so that it, not, it provides clockwise torque to counter that, but it can't. Normal force is, it's a contact force, it's, a, it's a limited to acting at this point of contact. So the smallest the torque that normal force can provide is zero. Once it's there, it doesn't go into negative, whereas uh, gravitational torque can go either way. So, so once it's beyond the tipping point is where uh, the gravitational force is providing counterclockwise torque and causing it to tip over. And so, so you know, deciding between C and D, which force, uh, which is, um, um, uh, which statement explains most correctly. Uh, I guess it goes with the meaning of additional force. Gravitational force, it's not changing. It's the same amount of force. So really what's changing is the clockwise torque due to gravity. It becomes negative, so it becomes counterclockwise. So clockwise torque due to gravity decreases to the point where it becomes negative and causes it to rotate um, counterclockwise. But, um, but C isn't right. So anyway, so, so if uh, this were to be asked in the free form, multi-part free form question that um, it ha will have, would have to do with analyzing this setup. Starting out with a free body diagram, and really the part that would take most amount of work is figuring out what's happening with the normal force. And really the normal force is the one that that uh, handling normal force, that's the one that will test your understanding of mechanics. Because what you really have to understand is that you arrange the normal force in such a way that it does the job that's required to do. And understanding what the job of a normal force is, so that's the, um, it, it, it takes, uh, um, it, it takes uh, more, greater understanding because it's not something that's, that can easily be explained in a single formula or something like that. So 